Thanks for having me. Oh, no problema. <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, talking about Red Dead Redemption 2 for the last time, I presume, for a while. Don't don't say that. I've said that before in a tomb, <laughs> Rise of the Tomb Raider video, and, well, we, we know how that went down. It would appear that I spoke too soon. So, once again, I'm sitting here in front of Red Dead Redemption 2. Well, kind of. It's actually running on a Stadia cloud instance and being beamed into my browser on my monitor. This is something wholly new for someone like me who has always been playing games locally and primarily on PC for most of their life. So what is it like for someone like me to play a game on Stadia? Well, getting it set up was not that much of a problem. Just logging into our account, browsing the games, and clicking away. That was really rather simple and nice. But still, I was a bit confused. Now, recently I've been having a bit of connection trouble after moving residences, but I do have a rather good internet connection. Which is why I am surprised that Google Stadia's connection rating gave me merely a good rating of 33 Mbps down. So I cannot try out the 4K Stadia Pro stream. I'm surprised because with other speed tests I can achieve 340 Mbps down and my upload being 34 Mbps. And this is all while my connection is currently compromised and running slower than it should be. Steam doesn't seem to care though that my connection is compromised and I'm getting great download speeds there in excess of 40 megabytes per second. Yet Stadia still doesn't like my connection. As a result of that, I could locally only test the 1080p Stadia feed. My colleague Richard Ledbetter though did recordings utilizing a connection rated as excellent and supplied me with capture of the Stadia Pro 4K feed of this game. Utilizing that footage that he sent to me, we were able to deduce that that version of Red Dead Redemption 2 on Stadia Pro as he played it was 1440p. It was likewise running at a half refresh rate targeting 30fps. My experience though was rather different on the non-pro Stadia feed, with the game not only being streamed at a compressed 1080p, but also seemingly internally rendering at 1920x1080, all while targeting an unlocked refresh of 60fps. Although it must be said, pixel counting was even harder due to all this compression. Now why are they different? Well, depending upon your connection type, you can have two different performance profiles based upon what you set in the Google Stadia app connected to your account. If you have a better internet connection, you can take advantage of the higher res feed and by flipping it to that higher quality setting, you invisibly activate this mode in Red Dead Redemption 2 that also displays the game at an internal 1440p targeting 30fps depending upon which service you utilize. As mentioned, counting edge pixels was not easy, and image quality is probably the area that deserves the most pressing discussion as I see it. My experience with the 1080p stream was less than favorable in its initial opening moments. The beginning part of Red Dead Redemption 2 is presumably a horrible case for real-time video image compression. There are tons of small and fast-moving snow particles. It is very dark with soft moonlighting, that means there is very soft gradients of color and lighting change. In general, this means that the image at this 1080p stream is macro blocking rather often. So you can see very large box structures within the image, particularly in those areas devoid of particles where it's a bit darker. Looking at the moonlight in the 1080p version, you're confronted with large color gradient banding. That combination of artifacts in this 1080p version in the beginning part of this game really does not convey the feeling that you're looking at a real-time rendered game in front of you, rather just a video of a game as you might find it on YouTube. This feeling is exacerbated when you look at Red Dead Redemption 2's branding and aesthetic choices for its font and menus, which use a lot of red. Due to the chosen color format here, the video encoding turns all those reds embellished against darker backgrounds into elements that are of a much lower quality than the rest of the image. They generally look half resolution, basically. That same scene though in the 4K Stadia Pro feed thankfully looks a lot better, with that uptick in text resolution being the first most noticeable difference. All in all, a lot of the edges in general look decidedly less soft and fuzzy in comparison to that 1080p stream. As I say that though, the larger video compression artifacts will of course remain, so that general macro blocking and color banding is still there. 
just the apparent size of the blocks and the bands change due to resolution changing. But you still see them. Macro blocking and banding in dark scenes is something that is inherent to compressed video streaming, so I'm very curious how games with a lot of dark hues or red will look. Doom Eternal should be a very interesting test case when that comes out. Those issues of macro blocking and large color banding subside later in the game as you reach brighter lit areas and the overworld, although nighttime of course will still manifest such artifacts more readily. In those brighter lit areas, you can see how the 1080p feed compares to the game running locally at 1080p at Xbox One X settings on a Ryzen 3900X and RTX 2080 Ti, a PC which is massively overspec for producing such a 1080p image at 60fps with these settings. But carrying on, ignoring the slight differences in time of day and weather in these images, I think the overall takeaway in stills is that Stadia's 1080p feed on this game is an okay facsimile of the overall sharpness of edge detail. Since the game isn't utilizing post-process sharpening here, TAA at 1080p will soften the edges and the image as a whole. When you look at internal edge detail though, there's something amiss about the 1080p streamed version from Google Stadia. Here in general, much of that pixel sized texture detail is crushed out of existence on textures close to the camera. And this is with the game camera being completely still. If it were moving here, there would be even more apparent differences between the versions. If you look even further into the distance at textures further away from the camera, you will see something that I find very curious. And I'm not sure if this is 100% the case, but both the 1080p and Stadia Pro streams seem to be utilizing a lower level of anisotropic filtering, which as present here on these Xbox One X settings is exactly 4x AF. This is rather noticeable in many scenes of the game when you put it directly next to the Xbox One X version for example, like the ground near this wagon here. Along with a higher native resolution as found on Xbox One X, even the Stadia Pro stream here shows distant crust texture detail as if it has a lower level of AF. It may be video compression, but at the same time perhaps it is best practice on Stadia in general to reduce the AF to eliminate problematic cases for compression. The less pixel size details changing from frame to frame, the better the compression will be and the better the overall streamed image quality should be at a consistent rate. That curious detail about anisotropic filtering brings me to the settings that I found both versions to be utilizing. Now I did not go nearly as hardcore here to figure these out as I did on my settings video for PC, but I looked for the larger ticket items that were easy to spot. Starting with lighting quality. The way the moonlighting shines in the beginning of the game makes it a match for medium or Xbox One X settings here with that variable, where the moonlight does not show. After this I looked at textures, and even though the textures are lacking in quality next to the native game running on a local machine, they prove to be the ultra quality setting, much like Xbox One X, as textures set to high produce a very different looking ground. After this shadows generally look the same as Xbox One X, so high for near shadows, but with that caveat that we saw in the PC version where the far shadow setting cannot go low enough to match Xbox One X. So Stadia does indeed show higher quality cascades in some cases where Xbox One X does not. Tessellation on close inspection looked most similar in terms of distance and deformation to the high setting on PC. For quality, like on Xbox One X, is the medium setting, where the high setting above it produces very different looking, more realistic looking fur. Volumetric quality was much like it was on Xbox One X, so somewhere around the medium to low setting that drastically reduces the exactness of light shafts in many scenes, like here where Xbox One X and the Stadia Pro Stream have little to no apparent volumetric light shafts, while on PC Ultra they are extremely obvious. Beyond this we have other slight surprises like the reflection quality on Stadia being set to low, much like Xbox One X, where render to texture reflections in the game's windows fizzle and pop and look generally much lower quality than even those set to high on PC. The biggest surprise for me was actually the fact that the render distance for grass managed to not be higher than that found on Xbox One X. As can be seen here, the grass manages to stop at that same distance on the Stadia Pro feed as it does on Xbox One X, 
where the higher end PC settings of course allow to go much, much further. Even the tree LOD setting, which is decidedly inexpensive on PC, is set to Xbox One X settings of low here on the Stadia stream. So in the end, the more obvious settings are more or less on par with Xbox One X settings that we've derived in the past, albeit with the curiosity they are concerning anisotropic filtering or texture quality at a distance. While the visuals manage to be similar to Xbox One X, controls are not. Utilizing reference data from very recent tests of input latency on the PC version and on Xbox One X, I found that the amount of latency between depressing the trigger and firing the pistol from the readied position in first person was 385 milliseconds on the 1080p Stadia feed at 60 FPS. This is in comparison to the 355 milliseconds that I measured with triple buffering at 4K60 on PC. The Xbox One X was doing 435 milliseconds with that same action. So it is 29 milliseconds slower or basically two frames of latency slower than the PC version at 60 FPS set up locally. But it is 50 milliseconds faster than the local Xbox One X version which is running at 30 FPS. That 29 milliseconds sounded familiar to me though, and indeed checking my latency to the Google Cloud server showed it at 25 milliseconds or so. So it requires just a bit of processing time in addition to the time it takes to contact with the servers themselves, which is really impressive. That control latency can only stay that way if the game is managing that performance profile all the time to keep the level of control latency consistent. And at the moment of my having played through the game's first chapter and having run around that open world doing a variety of missions and odds and ends, I cannot say that it holds the performance as well as I would prefer. While the game targets 60 FPS, it spends a large portion of that opening chapter slightly below that in the high or low 50s. While that level of performance is not inherently bad, being triple buffered V-Sync and being beamed onto your screen will mean visible judder and a game that does not look as fluid as it should and will likewise not control fluidly. The consistency of controls is lessened in those moments when the FPS is dropping below 60. In this opening chapter, the game's performance reminds me of a game I might have played on PC where I could have set the graphical settings too high or the resolution target too high while the game was displaying an empty room or a very simple scene. So it will do those scenes rather well. But as soon as any sort of action starts happening or particle effects start flying on the screen, then we will see the performance dipping. I also experienced a few moments of genuine stutter, where the game would halt for a fraction of a second, with my registering a near 200 millisecond stutter at one point. They were indeed not constant or even very common, but they were visible in those few moments where it occurred. That slightly below 60 FPS performance with Judder does indeed occur in the rest of the game after the first chapter. My walking around Saint Denis incurred undulating frame drops below 60 FPS, so the game never looked visually smooth while walking around. Galloping around the open world though feels much better, with just occasional frame blips now and then, and is definitely a much greater experience than the opening chapter or how it feels to walk around Saint Denis. But as soon as you hit any sort of combat or anything that is more challenging for what I presume is the GPU, the frame rate dips just below 60 FPS, introducing that judder again. So that is the performance profile of the game in balanced mode. Targeting 60 FPS, but more often below that, introducing judder. The high visual quality mode on Stadia Pro in comparison has a much smoother performance profile where in our testing, it did not manage to actually drop frames from its 30 FPS target, regardless of the situation. And if you think about the 1080p 60 performance mode and Stadia hardware, this type of scaling to 30 FPS at 1440p makes a lot of sense. It really should not be dropping frames, and thankfully it really doesn't. Rather, in this mode, we see something that I also noted in my review of the PC version. There's occasional frame pacing issues, basically. Essentially, the way the game caps to 30 FPS or half of the refresh rate of 60 is imperfect. So when walking around or doing anything really, 
there will be minor blips in the frame time, where two unique frames occur after one another instead of having the same frame occur twice in a row. This in practice is not visibly distracting, but I noticed it, and we seem to see it more frequently in the Saint Denis area. But beyond this issue, the game in the Cydia Pro High Quality mode sticks very well to its 30fps target. So in the end, this port of Red Dead Redemption 2 has me rather puzzled. I did enjoy how effortless it was to just open my browser and play it, yet I was dismayed with the quality of the feed as limited by how Google Stadia rates my connection. And even with the footage from the Stadia Pro high quality feed, I think the macro blocking and color banding there in darker scenes is not something that I would actually prefer to play. I'm similarly dismayed at the way performance is handled. I do like that the game targets 60 FPS, as that is the best way to ensure great visuals and controls, but I wish it was more consistently a flat 60 FPS instead of dropping frames into the 50s. The high quality mode above the standard one running at 30 FPS and 1440p does raise a number of questions about how Stadia's actual rendering performance is on the GPU side. There are a lot of theoretical GCN flops that Stadia has access to, so I really expected higher rendering resolution given the key visual settings that we derived. But perhaps there's something we cannot see behind all the compression. If I had a choice, this is not the version of the game that I would play. But I have choice of playing it on PC and on console. Perhaps this version of the game is not meant for a user like me, with my age, my experience, and my choices of places to play. Perhaps a younger audience, or one that is less focused on power user kind of things, would not mind some of the visual and performance aspects that I covered. I mean, as a child, I played games on the Nintendo 64, with frame rates and resolution that were much worse than even the standard Stadia feed. And this is just the beginning of the service's lifespan, so I'm curious to see how it advances in quality and options in the future. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, then please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to talk to me about Google Stadia, then write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen. This world has its consolations. Thank <laughs> you.